Welcome to the 8.2.5 BFA Windwalker PvP guide. My name is Josh, also known as Ancient PvP, and today we will be discussing a Windwalker's talents, Azerite traits, rotation, macros, comps, as well as tips to push higher. For timestamps, I will be adding these in the description, but for now, enjoy the video. Any questions, please leave them in the comments below, and if you can, help this channel out by giving this video a big thumbs up and subscribe if you haven't already. Now, on with the video, enjoy. Hello there guys, welcome to Talents and Azerite Traits. This is the part where I'll just be showing what I run. It's pretty basic, I won't go into extreme detail, but any questions just ask below. Eye of the Tiger keeps the dot on, has way more uptime, and you'll get a lot more out of it than using the other two. Chi Wave's good for hit combo, but Eye of the Tiger's just better in most circumstances. Tiger's Lust is very good because it gets you out of roots and you'll be able to stick to targets a lot easier than the other two even though Chi Torpedo does have more movement it's not going to be as usable and also this is an extra thing to use as well as the two rolls. Right next Ascension is just better than the other two because it has way more uptime and you'll pretty much never run out of energy when using it. Fist of the White Tiger is good for that burst but to be honest Ascension is just better in every way. Energizing Elixir is pretty much can just be ignored. These three, Ring of Peace is just better than the other two because it can be used on a healer whereas the other two can't really. Tiger Tail Sweep you could argue you could use it then but to be honest if you save Leg Sweep correctly you'll never need to worry about its cooldown. Good Karma is very good when you're against things uh, like Rest of Druids as they have Thorns because it means you can burst in without having to worry about the damage and it will in fact heal you so that's even better. But to be honest, Ring of Peace is just better in most circumstances. Against Warlocks, I find Good Karma is good, but you can knock Chaos Bolt with Ring of Peace, but normally you're feared, which is why I prefer Good Karma. Also helps Healer with mana, and you can play a bit more aggressive. In Jewels, it's a must-go. You will barely win any Jewels without Good Karma, because every other Windwalker is going to be running it. If you go against them, they're just going to Karma straight into your Karma, and they'll kill you with theirs. But yeah, Good Karma is just great. All around, brilliant. Next row. Diffuse Magic reflects roots, it, that is just insanely strong, means you can stick to targets a lot easier, as well as take reduced magic damage, so if you see a Warlock bursting, Diffuse Magic, sort it, easy. Dampen Harm's insanely good against things like Holy Pally Warrior, because you can pop it and avoid so much damage there, and also, you're not really going to be doing any magic damage, and you're not going to have trouble sticking to targets against Holy Warrior, so Dampen Harm's just better there. Next is Hit Combo, Russian Jade Win and Invoke. Invoke does more damage in the burst but has a 2 minute cooldown and your Azerite trait already gives you XUM, or Zwen, however you say it. So Hit Combo is just better, Russian Jade Win can be ignored, it was used for like 1 month during Season 1 but everyone agreed Hit Combo was just better, so that's why. It also brings a unique playstyle to Windwalker which I find quite fun where you have to use a different ability all the time. So yeah, hit combo is the way forward there. Bottom row, Serenity, pick it against any class that can root. If a rest of Druid's going to run Mass and Tangle, then in threes you could argue Serenity's better, but to be honest, they're rarely going to do it. So Whirling Dragon Punch is pretty much always used versus Resto. Against Shamans, always go Serenity, because if they're smart, they're going to use their Totem to uh, Mass and Tangle all of them. And they pretty much always do go that, so Serenity's there. Against classes like Mage, it depends. Fire Mage only have one root and it's the close to them one. So if you're in melee range, they can use that there. So Serenity is good. Against uh, Frost Mages, they can do it way more. So Serenity is a must pick there. But yeah, against pretty much Resto Druid and Fire Mage, you can go Whirling. So as I said, they only have specific times they can do it and they're rarely going to do it. Resto is not going to talent Mass and Tangle over Bash because pretty much wasted against Windwalker. So yeah, Fire Mage also, the cooldown on it, they're not going to be able to get it off all the time, so you want to go Whirling against Fire Mage as well. For the PvP talents, Alpha Tiger's really good if you don't need to go Grapple or Tiger Eye Brew. Tiger Eye Brew is a must go against Warlocks because it avoids their Demon Armor. Against Warriors and Holy Pallies it's a must go as well, and you'd probably go Grapple over Fortifying in that case. But to be honest, they're pretty much the only ones you go. Ty Disabling and Wind War Waker is really good against mages because it means you can root them from afar or just escape their Novas instantly without using cooldowns. Fortifying Brew is a must go if you don't need to use uh, Grapple and Alpha because you should always pick that because it does 
makes your karma way more efficient because it's you know 50% HP with this it's just a lot bigger reverse harm does more damage so I normally pop this it makes touch of death do more damage as well so it's all around just really good so these are pretty much the three you'll always go grapple as I said against melee classes and DKs if they pop transfusion you can just grapple it away insanely strong at killing DKs low HP because they can't death strike heal Besides that, that's pretty much all of them. Uh, if I've missed anything for the talents, just drop it in the comments below and help out other Windwalkers if they're watching. Or if you have any questions, and just inform there. As a right, traits. Uh, if you don't have conflict, then you would choose reverse harm over Alpha Tiger, because that's more important than the damage there. Alpha Tiger, by the way, just to point out, if I hit this target, it gives me 30%, and then if I hit that, I like another target, it gives me another 30%. You don't have to wait the cooldown of it, because it is a new target, which is what it says there. It's not 30 second cooldown, it's 30 second effect per target. So that's an important thing to read. So, with the Azerite traits, uh, Crucible of Flame and Condense are pretty much going to be your go to all the time. Vision of Perfection can be used over Condense because it means it heals you, gives you a bit of verse if you have the rank 3, and also, you know, reduces the cooldown of Storm, Earth, and Fire, which is really important. But I think Condense is just better all around and makes you do way more damage. I got 2.4 without the rank 2 version. Weird flex, but okay. But yeah, <laughs> it's really strong. Uh, condensed is just insane. Uh, so with rank 3 I expect to push even higher, even quicker just because of how strong it is. Definitely go do your raids and get that because you're going to find it a lot easier with these three. Crucible and Conflict are a must go though. Either swap vision for condensed or don't do anything else. PvE, go blood of the enemy. This is a PvP guide. But uh, yeah, that's pretty much that. Any other questions, just drop them below and we'll move on to the next section. So here we're on to the rotation side of the video. So your basic rotation would be something like reverse harm to get two chi, tiger palm to put on the dot into a rising sun kick into a tiger palm into fist of fury. That's what I find a good strong opener is. People play it a bit different. Some people do revert, like some people just start instant tiger palm, take the damage, reverse harm. They just get value out of every little thing. I just think strong openers are better than value early game. Value is more of a late game thing. But what I normally do is pretend these are the gates here. Gates open, I'll place my teleport somewhere. I will then reverse harm to get the two chi. I will then tiger palm, uh, rise and sun kick to put the healing reduction on there. Tiger palm again into a fist of fury. What I then like to do is, well you see I've got a spinning crane kick so I'd actually do that as a filler. I'd probably reverse harm again, the game goes on a bit. So if you're then thinking to burst, you would then pop your badge, fortifying brew if you think you won't need it later into touch of death. Makes your touch of death do more damage while you have stamina buff so that's why some people actually go stamina trinket. But I find that the equip is even better. That then blows up. Obviously you would burst into that touch of death. Like do as much damage as you could there. You'd want your Fist of Fury to obviously go the entire distance. Because that's more damage than anything else. But yeah the main the two things that make Windwalker so good. Are Rising Sun Kick and Fist. Rising Sun Kick for the healing reduction. And Fist of Fury for the AoE. The parry and the slow. So that's really what you want to do. We'll be talking about add-ons right at the end as well, which you can see from the equip trinket. But to be honest, that's your basic rotation. So just to reiterate, open the gates, teleport somewhere safe, reverse harm into a rising sun kick, into tiger palm, into fist of fury, which is on cooldown. You'd probably then whirling dragon punch, and then you would just do your normal, which kind of repeat it, rising sun kick, reverse tiger palm, that sort of a repeat thing with fillers in between. I like Whirling Dragon Punch straight after the Fist of Fury because it is an even stronger opener. Obviously you'd need your Storm Earth and Fire as well with your Touch of Death Burst. But this is just a quick rotation guide. To be honest it's fairly simple. It's a different button each time but I just think that makes it easier to learn. Rising Sun Kick, Fist of Fury, then Whirling Dragon Punch, Circle, Reverse. There we go. So now we are going to be discussing macros. This is the most important macro a Windwalker has and is essential for dueling as well as getting the perfect burst off. So if we look here, it's a touch of death macro, target exists. Now what this does, it means when you paralysis, that's actually out of combat, you can then get a touch of death off that does not break it, meaning you can do a perfect leg sweep into it. So if you paralysis, touch of death, look, we can then walk away, 
it would normally end there. You then leg sweep, and then as the leg sweep ends, that wasn't perfectly timed, he can then die, but obviously you'd burst into it, so you can get tons of damage off in that leg sweep, and then it just blows up for an insane amount. Now, if you saw with the rotation, obviously you'd pop your other stuff as well, but if you want a fresh burst on a target, that is the perfect way to do it. If obviously you're just doing a swap burst, it doesn't matter. They're probably going to have Resto Druid Bleeds on or Priest Dots, depending on who you're playing with, or even Glimmer of Light, uh, Azerite, that Paladin Sky. So you probably wouldn't do that, but in duels and circumstances, you know, that's a brilliant talent to go. And I just keep on my Touch Death as normal because of how good it is. My other macros include Focus Macros, so Paralysis, Grapple Weapon, which is there, uh, Spear Hand Strike, you know, for that Focus Kick. Obviously, that's technically the most important macro and every single class needs it if you dps just because then if that's your uh this is like your focus attack that attack that just like boom silence back on it pretty easy and it means you don't have to click or target depending on how you do so yeah it's very vital that's pretty much it with macros i don't have many this is a good macro i use which is a focus mouse sofa so if i press x on top of anything it then just targets it it's pretty good i think that's a lot better than using a keybind because uh you know it's good with pets and things or like some little things you have to deal with so yeah i just think that's really good really good macro there but to be honest people have different ways of using that but yeah that's what i like so with macros that's pretty much it obviously just pause the video if you want to copy any pretty much it you don't need this one that was just a random one i made before i realized you can literally just drag and drop the thing straight off here that then becomes that but yeah that's about it so the next thing we're going to be discussing now are comps. Comps I really love are Resto Druid Windwalker because Resto Druid can stick on the target and help you kill. It also can give you thorns so the DPS that's on you is doing insane damage and you can just focus swap onto them pretty easily. I also love Holy Paladin Windwalker because they can freedom you, hodge targets. I think to be honest Holy Pally is the best healer you can go with as a Windwalker just because of how long they can keep you alive. You can, you know use your karma a lot easier without having to worry because they have sack and bops so yeah that's an all-round winner for me holy paladin and that's normally how i push the most although my highest dxp was with a resto druid just because of the sheer amount of damage they can do as well as using their clone efficiently disc is really good for pushing quickly if i'm low here i'll go straight with the disc because the damage me and them can do is just so overwhelming for a lot of new healers as well as even some experienced ones because we can peel a lot with ring of peace as well as using paralysis and leg sweep effectively so yeah, yeah there's lots you can do as well as mind control so to be honest it's up to you what comps to play in threes you'd probably want to go with something like unholy dk holy paladin just because you can go you know full damage mode without having to worry about you know somehow randomly dying because there's always sack and things uh resto druids again is really good but uh to be honest holy pally i would take over resto disc is really good but you need to make sure your disc is experienced so they can survive as well as do insane damage but yeah that's about it when it goes to comps so the next thing we'll discuss now are some tips to push higher okay so just some tips I like, uh, when you saw with the macro earlier, you could do some uh, big burst there with touch of death, make sure to use that effectively. Use reverse harm uh, on cooldown as much as possible because it does insane healing, because good value, does big damage, so that's another thing. Uh, a lot of things you can do is like Blades, Blades Edge Arena is uh, if this is the bridge here you can ring a piece and knock them straight down so if you're on the DPS about here the healer's uh, down and is running up the staircase you can play ring a piece here they're going to fly straight down another thing is if they are on the bridge healing you can ring a piece them off and then they're going to have to use their mobility to run all the way up so then you have either killed the DPS or just swap healer and they have no way of escaping you now that's another little trick um, Another thing is just having the correct add-ons. So I'll actually go into add-ons now. So what I like to use for uh, PvP anyway is big debuffs. So if I, for example, run over to this training dome and put Touch of Death on, Touch of Death goes on as portrait. So you can see things like that. Uh, Rogue Vendetta goes on yours. So that's actually probably the biggest add-on you'll need. Uh, another add-on that's good is obviously Gladius or Gladius X, depending on which one you use. To be honest, if you've seen my other videos, I'll have like some bars here, which are the cooldowns here. 
same for the enemies show their HP and that that's really needed because it just makes everything a lot easier it's not me around here so I can see like oh Paladin doesn't have bubble I'm just gonna kill him now uh, whereas if you don't have that add-on you'll be like has he used bubble yet maybe he has maybe has he got it back yet like you don't really know but this add-on keeps track of that so it's amazing um, what other add-ons do we have I forget slash add-ons don't work what a joke um, we call us so if we go over to this training dummy if I have an equipped trinket dropped and I don't want to just be staring at this if I attack him for a little bit you'll see what happens we'll see how long it takes to proc there we have it it has procced now a nice little proc there so as you can see it is up here but it says there so it basically means that I'm going to be staring at my bars the entire game otherwise you're going to be spending a long time looking for it so you know another tips to push high is gear the gear matters so much in BFA I think it's stupid but hey PV for the win all of a sudden so I like to run double bile because uh, it keeps my dot up all the time so if we run over here and then hit him look it just goes on instantly and stacks go up a lot quicker. if I fist a fury like I don't even get to three stacks so quick it does go off auto attacks so but yeah look three stacks that'll take half as long with just one of these um so it, it doesn't go above three stacks but uh it procs a lot quicker it's like double gear get a coup. like it's a bleed so uh you know there's no point having two weapons because the bleed doesn't increase in damage but uh procs more but to be honest with worry it's a bit different you'd only run one but with this, it's just a lot better, in my opinion. Feelers Dispel it, it's going to go on straight away. So they spend mana dispelling. And it's just all around great. Like, I have a, what, 445, and I still pick two full 30s over it. So uh, this is also bad stats. These have no stats, but the effect's just so good. That's why I go it. Um, the best weapon you can have is actually Diver's Folly, which is a mythic second boss or just any difficulty, but you want the mythic one, uh, Blackwater Behemoth, uh, main weapon for Divers and Vial on second, because that just is crazy, like it changes Windwalker so much having both of them. Sadly, I don't have Divers, but I use two of these, which is honestly pretty much as good. So yeah, I'm pretty happy with that. Equip procs more than any other trinket. So definitely you want one equip over double on use and then obviously if you're equipped procs you can then use your on use as well so you basically have two on uses at the same time which can't happen with a normal on use because it gives it a 30 second cooldown. So yeah they're pretty much tips, gears, gear and things like that you know to push higher add-ons obviously with Windwalk as well I'll just quickly go over stats this isn't really an in-depth uh, guide it is just to help out a little bit just for 8.3 is going to be pretty much the same so uh haste is decent you probably just want over you want to aim around 10 percent haste not really any more than that crit uh yeah crit's good but to be honest versatility is what you want the most of if i could have 100 verse then i would <laughs> just everything to reverse on uh, stat verse is just all around better um mastery is decent because you have mastery combo strikes which increases your overall damage when you press something different seal it when they are not repeat which is again why hit combo is so good so yeah this is pretty much just a summary guide hopefully it's helped a little bit for people who don't know wind walker at all hopefully they can watch this guide and just you know figure it out a little bit it is my first guide i've ever done so be nice you know i've got to learn how to do it it's all very new to me but hopefully i'll produ be producing more videos and yeah just be able to get more content out there and help people push i'm 2.6k exp so i do know how to play Windwalker fairly well. Obviously, there are rank one guys like Skillcatch. You can also go check out. They're decent. They're very good. But uh, with these sort of videos, the main way you'll be learning a lot is if you comment, then I'm able to help you there. So yeah, just leave any comments on any tips you want. I'll get there pretty much instantly, hopefully. But that's pretty much it with all of this. So just remember, pump that damage up. Use reverse harm effectively. Tiger palm to keep the dot up, fist of fury to avoid damage by parrying, rising sun kick for the healing reduction, blackout kick for that filler because it also reduces the cooldown of your fist of fury and rising sun kick when used, use crackling jade lightning if you have no abilities and want to keep hit combo going without pressing a repeat and yeah it also knocks back people which is a nice little thing. But yeah they're pretty much the tips you need like blades edge arena using crackling to knock them off, rings of peace to knock them off, using karma when your healers in CC all those little things but yeah any questions anything at all just write them in the comment give this video a like if you can and i hope you all have a wonderful day thank you bye